Today we're going to start uh, off by talking about some visual demonstrations on actually how to do the HDR um, series of images where you take four or five, six different pictures of a, a subject that is in an extremely contrasty situation and then you can uh, combine those all together and come up with a, a great result. I've got a, a sample here of one of my favorites. It was up uh, in one of my typical areas we do workshops at up in the eastern Sierra, a place called Marsh Lake. And we got there real early one morning and uh, got there. We actually got up about 3 o'clock, drove up, uh, hiked in, and spent uh, probably an hour hiking in and arrived at the lake right before sunrise, which is what our, what our plan was. And the scene was, as you can see it here, it's, it's pretty contrasty. It's just basically uh, pretty much a real extreme highlight area there for the mountains and the sky and then an area you know, below that. We were, we were shooting at about 10,000 feet or higher and the peaks in the background there are about 13,000. So we were in a pretty dark valley. This first picture uh, is the one that, that I used as my darkest image or what we call a highlight exposure where I metered off of the brightest area in the scene and locked that exposure in and then kept the same aperture for the ensuing, I think we shot five or six different pictures here. So let me just scroll down here to the EXIF data. This was at f16 at a 40th of a second and I had the ISO at 100 and my white balance set for shade. So at f16 at a 40th I've got good detail in the highlights, we checked the histogram and everything was fine. So, but we have, as you can see, there's absolutely no information in the shadows. It's just completely black, which is, this isn't bad. This is a nice, you know, if I had to just pick one, um, one exposure of this scene, this would probably be the one that I would use. But I wanted to get information uh, everywhere in the shadows, midtones, uh, all the way through because there was some flowers in the foreground, and this lake is really encircled by a lot of really nice marsh. So we took a second picture, and one of the... the standard practices for HDR stitching uh, is you want to keep the aperture the same so your depth of field doesn't fluctuate and all you change is the uh, your shutter speed. So I bracketed in full stop increments here. So I went from a 40th of a second to on the, on the second picture to a 20th of a second. You can see that boost in brightness. Let me go back. There's the first one. There's the second one. So that's a stop different from a 40th to a 20th at F16 um, that's one stop bracketing. But as you can see, some of the highlights are starting to get blown out there. Now we shot the third one at a tenth of a second, which again is another stop over. Now we're starting to see great information in the midtones and even down in the foreground where that flower is. Here's one at a fifth of a second, which is a stop over what the last one was. And then here's the final one at a third of a second. So, I mean, you can't even see the mountain back there anymore. Let me just go back through those really quick. Again, this is a one, two, three, four, five stop bracketed series for HDR. So we're going to put all these pictures into, I'm using Photomatix or Photomatix, uh, which you can get as a free download and try it out. It's, it's absolutely amazing and very simple to do. Uh, and you just put all the files into the uh, HDR uh, software converter which is Photomatix and then you just have it uh, do a couple things you press a couple buttons and you generate I think the first button is generate HDR and then you do a tone mapping thing and this is the picture of the next one I'm going to show you here this is what it came up with this is pre prior to any Photoshop work or any levels curves color corrections anything so this is pretty amazing this is a you know much better representation of, of how things looked than any of the previous images so, I mean, as you can see, that was pretty simple. Um, the time it actually took me to do this, once I put the images together in, um, in Photomatix, I think maybe it was two or three minutes before it had this final picture generated. So, pretty easy way to do things. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.